Hey guys, welcome back, it's Ripe again, back with more homeowner association stories. In today's video, my crazy neighbor cut off my daughter's hair and wants her arrested. Here is what happened. My family and I moved into a new house a handful of years ago after I got a new job in a neighboring state which meant that we had to move away from where we had been living. None of us were particularly excited about the change in location, but I was hopeful that we would settle in and find our new home here. The house was perfect for us as my family is me, my wife, Sandra and our daughter Becca. We were a little worried about moving as we are black and we know that not every neighborhood is friendly towards people of color, but on the day we moved in, we saw that the family next door were also people of color. We talked to them a bit and learned that they were Chinese, which eased some of our nerves about living in the area. The mother of the family, Karen, was a little cold towards us, but that was understandable since she was just getting to know us. They had a daughter as well and it seemed like she got along fairly well with Becca, which made me happy. Over the years that we lived there, we got visited by the police more often than anyone really should, especially since we didn't ever do anything wrong. Every single time they showed up, it was because they had gotten an anonymous report that we were up to something. We had just gotten back from the grocery store one day when the police knocked on the door hoping to talk to us. I asked them what was wrong and they said that someone saw us bringing suspicious things into our house. Even they seemed a little bit annoyed by the whole situation as they had relaxed considerably the moment I opened the door. I explained to them that we had just brought in groceries and I didn't know why someone would think that we were doing anything suspicious. There were other situations, all of them similar to the first one. It did not happen so often that the police stopped responding completely, but we got to know the officers pretty well. We started to keep a list of all the things we were reported for, ranging from noise violations on nights we were not even home, to claims that we were dealing drugs out of our house. We were never charged with anything of course and there wasn't proof that we were doing anything wrong. I started noticing that Karen was home every time the police were called, which was not exactly strong evidence that she was behind it, but I was suspicious. My daughter typically keeps her hair in box braids, which are intricate and take a long time to do. Sometimes it takes multiple days to get every strand of hair into a braid. Becca has long hair that she is incredibly proud of and I am amazed by the amount of care she puts into it. We were outside one morning getting ready to go to school when we saw Karen outside with her daughter. I waved at them and Karen stopped where she was and looked at her own daughter and then mine. Her child always sported a short haircut which I thought framed her face perfectly, but I was getting the sense that Karen was jealous of Becca's beautiful long hair. I said good morning and Karen scowled, replying that my daughter should not have such a ghetto hairstyle, since it made the rest of the neighborhood supposedly look bad. I just frowned and rushed Becca into the car because I didn't feel like calling out her problematic comment. Karen was part of the local HOA, which is probably why she commented on making the rest of us look bad. The other HOA members were not racist as she was, at least not openly racist. Not long after that incident outside, we got another visit from the police. This time they were investigating a report of child abuse and neglect which was shocking to me. They wanted to talk to Becca so I called her over to the front door and left them alone since they wanted to talk with her privately. They left 50 minutes later and Becca told me that their report had been about her hair specifically and there was concern that we were letting it get unhygienic and inappropriate. It only took one look and a short conversation for the cops to see that it was unwarranted and I couldn't help but feel it was a little too coincidental that Karen had taken an issue with Becca's hair only a few days earlier. We never confronted Karen about it because we knew she would blow it out of proportion and potentially cause problems for us since she was an HOA member. The whole thing was annoying but it didn't seem worth it to jeopardize the life we had built here and potentially create a scenario where we would be forced to move out or something. We did our best to ignore her and all the microaggressions we were faced with. A month ago Becca had gotten these beautiful red hair extensions and incorporated them into her box braids to create a multicolored statement piece that she was proud of. A big dance was coming up at school and this was going to pull her entire outfit together. She was practically giddy with excitement about the whole thing. We have a bench in our front yard along with some other furniture for the times we want to sit outside on a sunny day or admire the moon at night. So Becca was out there with some of her friends and they were busy discussing the dresses they would be wearing to the dance and ideas for their hair and makeup. 
Karen came by at some point and waved hello to the girls as she stepped up to the porch. She pretended to ring the doorbell but didn't actually press it. We have one of those video doorbells but I was not paying much attention to it since the girls would set it off every time they got up or moved around too much so I assumed the newest notification was just them. The video recorded everything and I was able to watch it back and see Karen turn around slowly with a sharp pair of scissors clutched in her hands behind her back. She started walking down the porch and approached Becca with the scissors in one hand. My daughter turned around and started to ask what she was doing when Karen slapped her across the face, quickly grabbing the ends of her hair and bringing the scissors up. The girls all started yelling and many of them pulled out their phones to record what was going on as they shouted at Karen to get away from them. I was inside at the time and heard them the moment they began shouting. I rushed outside to see my daughter with tears in her eyes and Karen holding a clump of Becca's braids in one hand and scissors in the other. It did not take long for me to put everything together and I was honestly worried that she would attack one of the other girls. I definitely did not trust her to be near my daughter with a sharp object, so I punched her in the face. I don't typically resort to violence, but I was genuinely worried about the well-being of my daughter and her friends, so I didn't stop to think it all through. I called 911 and officers showed up quickly to the scene where Karen was coming to and complaining about how much her face hurt, but she felt good enough to begin calling us criminals. Her friends were all standing up for her, but the officers were focused on what Becca was saying. She did a great job of explaining what happened and the evidence was clear as her braids were now on the ground and Karen still held the scissors in one hand. The officers who showed up were some of the same ones who had come to the house after Karen made false police reports previously about us, so they had good reason to believe that we were telling the truth. Not to mention everything was caught on camera because of my video doorbell, so the entire situation could be viewed by the police. They asked Becca if she wanted to press charges since cutting someone's hair without permission is considered battery. Becca of course decided to press charges and I stood behind her on that so Karen was taken into custody and is now serving jail time. We found someone who fit my daughter with a beautiful wig and while it wasn't the same as her perfect braids it was enough to make the school dance memorable. Karen's daughter came over to apologize even though she did not do anything wrong and I am hopeful that they might become close friends over time. And yeah, Ripe Stars, I gotta say, these Karens are becoming really unhinged and they are not even afraid to attack children. Absolutely crazy. Either way, if you like the story, please don't forget to like the video and also post a comment if you want to support me. Thank you so much in advance. The next one is titled, Psycho Karen Attacks Army Veteran at Beach. For the 4th of July, I love going to the beach with my family. For a little background, I am an army veteran, I am married and I have two young boys. During my duty, a grenade went off near me and damaged my leg pretty badly. There is not any fancy hospital in that situation, so saving it was not really an option. I got sent back home honorably discharged and made a vow to spend as much time with my family as I could. I was fitted for a prosthetic leg which my 5 year old son declares as the coolest thing ever. He likes to tell people that his dad is part robot. This year we got to the beach early to try and get a nice spot and there are some palm trees and getting a spot under one meant that we got to enjoy the shade it provided. It was hot out and the last thing anybody wanted was a sunburn. While my leg is good for many things, sand is sadly not one of them. It was easier for me once I sat down to just take the leg off and place it next to me. It didn't take 5 minutes before my kids were digging in the sand and wanting me to play with them. It was really starting off to look like a great day, plus it would end in fireworks that, while I don't love, I can handle, my boys seem to adore it. But cue a random woman walking up to us and clearing her throat, in the way that screams pay attention to me, because I am important. So this woman was very obese and I'm not shaming anything or anyone, that is important to the story though. She also had two kids that seemed around tennis running around and kicking sand all over people. They were old enough to know that what they were doing was wrong but to be looked not taught any manners on how to behave. I shall call this woman Karen, despite not really looking like a typical one. Me, can I help you? Karen, you're in my spot. Excuse me? Your spot? That's right, under this tree is where I'm gonna sit with my children. Me, well, we got here first. There are plenty of other spots on the beach. Karen, that is my reserved spot. 
Just a quick note that this is not a thing in the slightest. This beach and all beaches to my knowledge are first come first serve. If you want a good spot you can show up early. Me, I highly doubt that. Karen, I'm disabled. My weight qualifies me for special treatment and I need to be in this spot. I am well aware that there are obese people with actual disabilities and I can also say that I know for a fact that she was not one of them though. First of all, she was not even that big, she could move around perfectly fine while carrying things. She might have had an invisible disability but even then there are no disabled spots on the beach. As somebody with only one leg that has a hard time walking in the sand, I would know. Me, I'm disabled too, you don't see me going around trying to steal other people's spots though. That was when she looked closer and saw that I was missing one of my legs. She let out a noise of disgust and said that I should not even be allowed at the beach. I was getting really angry at her and my wife decided at this point to intervene before I blew up at this lady. She told her that it was the 4th of July and I was a veteran that was actually disabled by fighting for this country. I guess that was the worst thing to say because it just got Karen even angrier for no reason. She started waiting that I was a murderer and the worst kind of person in the world. I don't want to type out her entire rant because of its length and hurtful content but I will summarize it for you. She said that she was a pacifist and against war and the military because of it. That me being part of the system made me a murderer and a communist. I think she was just spotting random stuff but whatever, that I should not even be allowed at this kind of holiday or at the beach, showing off my so called disgusting leg. I have to comment that I find this hilarious considering what holiday we are celebrating. For those not in the US, the 4th of July celebrates our independence from Great Britain. You know, a war fighting. I have no idea what she thought the holiday was about because I never actually got a rebuttal against this woman. After her long winded rant she decided to get physical with me. Again, totally not what a pacifist against violence would do. However, this Karen was a complete psycho. She lunged at me and started trying to hit and smack me as I used my arms to hold her off. And then my wife got behind her and started to try and pry her off of me. I was not going to get hurt but I think Karen realized she would not win a physical fight with me and then decided to play dirty with another tactic instead. She must have just spotted my prosthetic leg and grabbed it before shoving my wife into the sand. She was okay but dazed and could not do anything about Karen running as fast as she could towards the water. I yelled for help saying that Karen had stolen my leg getting the attention of a lifeguard. Now we had a lifeguard chasing an obese Karen who was running towards the ocean. She got there first and proceeded to throw my leg as far as she could into the water. The lifeguard running in and getting it before it got lost. He brought it back to me and Karen was following him now yelling again about stealing her leg and discriminating against her for being disabled. I was so close to exploding like a volcano at her but the lifeguard beat me to it. Lifeguard, you have to leave right now. Karen, who the hell do you think you are? You cannot tell me what to do. Lifeguard, I'm the head lifeguard and at this beach we have rules. Even ignoring your actions, I've gotten a dozen complaints about your kids kicking sand at people and stealing off blankets. You have only been here half an hour and are not staying one more minute. Karen, you cannot kick me out, I'm disabled. Lifeguard, yeah, and I would bet anything that the car parked in the handicapped spot without any kind of placard is yours, right? You can leave now or I can call the police and tell them what you've been doing here. I bet they would love to arrest somebody trying to steal a prosthetic of a veteran on Independence Day. I guess Karen was scared about the police because she gathered her children quickly and started going to the parking lot. The lifeguard yelling that the kids had to drop the stuff they stole which they then actually did. Before Karen could escape in the car the police arrived and I told them exactly what happened and the lifeguard corroborated my statements. I ended up pressing charges on Karen because I would not let her get away with this. Long story short, Karen ended up behind bars which is exactly where she belongs. And yeah ripe stars I gotta say I would have been so angry if Karen got away with this BS especially on the 4th of July which is really a big deal in America obviously. This especially is not the day where you should attack veterans. Obviously there's no good day to ever do this but especially on this day this was probably one of the dumbest things Karen could have done in her life. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. This is the story about how I will never, and I mean never, live in an HOA neighborhood again in my life. I will start off by explaining that I bought a foreclosed home for a pretty good price a few years after the market crashed in 2008. 
I thought it would be a good investment, but I was dead wrong. The issue with this foreclosed home is that I did not realize, and neither did the inspector, that there was some neglect lurking behind the walls. The HOA had owned this home for quite some time before I bought it and it was sort of obvious that it had been ignored for a while, but I did not think too much of it. So a few months into living there, everything seems normal and commonplace. Until one day it simply wasn't. Anyways, it was a Friday and I very inconveniently had left town that weekend for a wedding. When I got home that Sunday, I arrived to utter disaster. My neighbor met me outside, he is a nice guy and believe it or not, saved my home from more damage when he had my water shut off. He noticed on Saturday sometime that there was water pooling out from under my garage door, so he called to have the water shut off. This unfortunately was after he had called the HOA, but they would not deal with it since it was the weekend and essentially not their problem it seems. He said that he had asked for them to call me to inform me of what was happening, but they had refused. Total a-holes. The damages that were done to the home were pretty extreme. I had to have the floor and subfloor replaced on a majority of the main story and not to mention the walls and baseboards that were ruined. All of my furniture was toast, I was barely able to salvage most of what I had on the main floor and the basement level below it. I'll admit, I had a small mental breakdown that day. Apparently what had happened was that the water heater and some other pipes burst on the second story, which was really the main level because of the way that my tri-level home was built. When the insurance company came to inspect the damages, the plumber noticed that there was some patchwork done to the water heater and some of the surrounding pipes, but it had been cleverly covered up. He even mentioned that he was not surprised, not one, not even the inspector noticed it. He then asked how long I had lived there and he said that he would assume it was done right before I bought the home. I was absolutely fuming at this point. The HOA had owned the house for years and the insurance company's inspector and plumber both said that this was a patch that was performed recently, a crappy patch that was the exact reason why this disaster just happened. All in all, this flooding resulted in almost $100,000 worth of damages. Talk about a panic attack. When I attempted to discuss the findings with the HOA at one of their meetings, they refused to take any responsibility for my home's damages whatsoever and said that if we had a proper inspection performed that it would have been found. The board leader even insinuated that I had done the patchwork and that I was only trying to blame them so that they would pay for the damages. I told that girl that she could basically go F herself and she had me removed from the meeting. Fast forward to the next week and I had several pieces of furniture and other items in the driveway. I was attempting to salvage some of my stuff and had it drying out in the sun. I had rented a temporary portable storage pot and roll away mini dumpster as well. One day while I was working on things and had construction going on at my house, that same woman walked up into my driveway seeing me working in my garage. She did not introduce herself or say anything friendly, but instead started asking right away about why I had all of this stuff sitting in my driveway. I told her that it was not her business, plus she already knew why all of this stuff was in my damn driveway. She said that I was going to have to move the storage pot and that I needed to contact the HOA that day to get permission for the roll away dumpster. And by the way, ripe stars, my apologies, it started raining really hard just now. Either way, apparently I was violating some rules or something, I politely said no and asked her to leave my property. Not even 24 hours later, there was the letter in the mail. I was literally waiting for it. Of course, it was her, the board leader, essentially repeating what she said to me in the driveway. Then there was a fine of 150 bucks for not having permission for the dumpster or the storage unit. I threw that BS right in the trash. I received a letter and more fines nearly every day, but did not really care because they couldn't take me to court until I had not paid their fines for six months. I also stopped paying their monthly dues because they can pound sand as far as I care. I planned on moving anyway once I was finished with construction. This place had left a bad taste in my mouth and I didn't want anything to do with it. About a week or two went by and one morning I went outside to leave and realized that the rollaway dumpster had a bunch of trash and other clutter items inside of it. 
Like someone had just tossed their old shed of crap into the dumpster that I am paying for. I'll admit that I sort of expected this, but I was pretty annoyed because it took up a lot of the room that I needed for the construction trash. Unfortunately, there was not anything I could do, because I was not sure whose trash it was, I let it go and went on with my day. A few more days passed and I came out of my house to find the dumpster completely gone this time. I was confused because I had not called for it to be removed and ended up reaching out to the company to see if they had picked it up by mistake. They told me no and said that I should drive around to see if someone in my neighborhood had taken it. I asked them if this was even a thing that could happen and they said that it happens more often than you would think, especially with the smaller ones like what I had. So I did as they suggested and sure as hell I found that mini rollaway dumpster sitting in one of my neighbor's driveways. I knocked on their door and a middle-aged man answered in his pajamas. When I asked him about the dumpster he did not say much but I could hear the voice of a familiar sounding woman behind him. It was that damn board member woman. I looked past him and could see just barely that they had some kind of construction going on in their kitchen. It looked unfinished. I walked over to the dumpster and lifted the lid. The man protested as I walked away from him. Inside it was some of my old ruined furniture and then some cabinets from their kitchen on top. I took pictures of the dumpster in their driveway for evidence. Without saying anything else, I backed my truck up to the mini dumpster, hooked it up to my hitch and drove away with it. The woman had come out before I pulled off yelling at me and she even threw her cup of coffee at my car as I left. I was pissed at this point and decided, to hell with it, I'm gonna sue these a-holes now. So that is exactly what I did. I got myself the best lawyer I could find that was willing to deal with an HOA and sued the hell out of them. I proved with multiple different sources that they were responsible for the pipes and water heater bursting, ruining my home and furniture and then I showed how they had stolen my rollaway dumpster as well. Thankfully, the court sided with me and awarded me a fair amount of money from the HOA in damages to my home. Then they even gave me extra for the board member stealing the dumpster, which I found quite amusing. The lady was pissed and yelled at me all the way out to my car until her husband dragged her away. I ended up fixing the place and selling it for quite a bit more than I had purchased it for. So it turned out to be a good investment after all, even though the HOA was a bunch of douchebags. So yeah guys, I guess if you are smart, you can still make money with a house that you bought in an HOA, provided that you find someone that would buy the house. And with this, we have reached the end of the video. However, if you cannot get enough of my content, please check out my endless playlist where you can find thousands of hours of content. In addition, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to not miss any of my daily uploads. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.